make her that part of a remnant. That's that one third I'm talking about. And her that has, was cast far off a strong nation. Most I shall reign over them. While my shall kill shot. In Mount Zion, from henceforth even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come. Even the first dominion, kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. We the children of Israel. Now why? Dost thou cry out loud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy consular perish? For prayings have taken thee as a woman in travail? Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, O twelve tribes of Israel. Say, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Like a woman in travail, for now shall thou go forth out of the city. It's like, I mean, it's getting closer and closer and closer. The contraction that a woman has in pregnancy, getting closer and closer and closer. So you see, now shall we go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field. That's the world, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. Here we are in America. There in America shall I be delivered. There in America, the Most High, while my second child shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. See? He redeem us from the hand of our enemies. Right here in America. Hallelujah. Galatians 4 and 4. Galatians 4 and 4 and 5. Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, the most I sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. That's why he was made through Joseph to Mary. That's the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we, who was under the law, might receive the adoption of sons. See? Who's the law? Who's under the law? Psalm 147, 19 and 20. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. You can to redeem those that were under the law. So who's under the law? Who's the law given to? Psalms 147, 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgment unto Israel. So we just defined who Israel is. Our forefather Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And you became a forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. This is what we show his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. This is what it says. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the most high. That's what we don't read about the judgment. These nations don't know anything about the judgment of the most high. We do good women. Captivity after captivity after captivity. But doing what? Not following his law, statutes, commandments. Psalms 105. See? Psalms 105. We're going to start at verse 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. We are the twelve tribes of Israel, who we are. His chosen. He is the most high our power. His judgments are in all the earth. Upon us, children of Israel. Not upon the other nations. But remember, that's, that's for his judgment. They have not known it. Praise ye the most high, said. Verse 8, he had remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant or contract or agreement he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. Abraham had a son named Isaac. He also had a son named Ishmael, but the most I chose Isaac. He confirmed the same unto Jacob. Jacob had the twelve tribes of Israel. But Isaac had who? Esau and Jacob. But the most high chose Jacob. He confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. And to Israel, representing the twelve tribes of Israel, for an everlasting covenant. There it is, the last forever. Titus 2. Praise ye the most high. Titus 2. The second chapter.
Titus, the second chapter. And we're going to read verse 13 and 14. Titus 2 and 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glory appearing of the great power in our Savior, our Mashiach Yahushua. Looking for the most high, the Mashiach Yahushua coming back. In the glorious appearance. That's our faith. We have to have. And who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all the nickel and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. A peculiar people is talked about in Deuteronomy 14 and 2. The good works is keeping the commandments of the Most High, doing what he said to do, following his rules and regulations. So when he come back, he'll be found worthy of everlasting life. Deuteronomy 14.2. Let you know, Deuteronomy 1 and 1 says, These be the words of Moses spake to all Israel on this side of Jordan. So the book of Deuteronomy is talking to the Israelites. So Deuteronomy 14 and 2, it says, For thou art an holy people unto the Most High of thy power. And the Most High have chosen thee to be a peculiar people. See, that's the peculiar people that's talking about, that we just read about in Titus. We the children of Israel, unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. See? He set us on high above all the nations of the earth. Only if we follow this law of such commandments. You see, that's what we're coming back to now. That's why we look at Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. For wandering minds. This is what we're doing as the Israelites. This is why we're going to be above all nations. This is what it says. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass, as we follow in the law of the Most High, having faith in the Most High, if thou shalt hearken, listen, diligently, and we got to be diligent, unto the voice of the Most High, thy power, which is the word of the Most High, which is my Shai, the Most High, that's speaking to us in these last days, the Spirit of the Most High, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Most High thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if this condition. Thou shalt hearken, listen unto the voice of the Most High thy power and do his commandments. Do what he said do. Be obedient. You know, set us above all nations. That's what the kingdom is about. So, knowing this, Moses has not cast those people. But you got to look at what happened to us. Okay, when you go to, we're going to look at something here. I want to go to Malachi. So you get an understanding of why our people are so jacked up. And they were jacked up when the Mashiach Shai came on the earth and it's not being presented as such. But we're going to look at it. The book of Malachi, the fourth chapter, and verse 4. Now, I'm here at Malachi because Malachi and beyond, before previously, before Malachi, we either in the Babylonian captivity. Syrian captivity, Syrian captivity, Egyptian captivity, Syrian captivity, Babylonian captivity, or the Persian and Mean Empire. You understand? So we, Daniel, Ezekiel, we go through all these prophets, all the way to Malachi, they're not in the kingdom that took down the Persian and Medes Empire or kingdom. We're in the Persian and Mean Empire in the book of Malachi. So now, in verse 4, he, he reminds us that remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. See what he said? He said, tell us to remember the commandments. We're in captivity under who? The Persian and Median power. So when you turn to the next page, a couple of pages, whatever is the New Testament, now where are you at? In Matthew, where are you at now? You're in the Roman Empire. 
So my question is, between Malachi being in the Persian Media Empire to Matthew, what happened to the Greek Empire? Because the Romans did take down the Persian Media Empire, the Greeks did. So what happened to that empire? We find it in the Apocrypha, the Greek Empire. So let's go into it to look at what happened to us. <clears throat> Mind you, like I said, we've been in captivity under mostly all these nations. We read Judges. We read the book of Judges. I'm not going to go into it exclusively, but we've been in captivity under all these nations. The major nations that ruled the world, we were in captivity under them. <clears throat> So, between Malachi and Matthew, we go to the book of First Maccabees, the first chapter. Now we see and get an understanding why the apocrypha is taken out. This is clear. Fourteen books. They're not hidden anymore because we got it right here. So, when you go to the first book of the Maccabees, And the first verse it says, this is first Maccabees 1 1, it says, and it happened after the Alexander son of Philip, Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, has smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes. You don't see that. Between Malachi and Matthew. Persian and Mede Empire, that's what Malachi said. And all the rest of the prophets. Except, except for they were in the Babylonian Empire. Because the Persian Medes took down the Babylonians. You see? But here we are in the Greek Empire, it says, where well, Alexander has smitten Darius, king of the Persians, and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first over Greece, the Greek Empire, and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went, and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, robbed many nations. And so much that the earth was quiet before him because he was conquering all nations, bringing them in subjection to the Greeks. The first Edomite rulership under Alexander the Greek, right here in the Apocrypha. Whereupon he was exalted and his heart, his mind was lifted up. See? But Alexander died after reigning for 12 years. Verse 7, so Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. It has been estimated from about 20 years old to 32 years old. Listen, in his service, there ruled everyone in his, in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves, so did their sons after them. Many years and evils were multiplied in the earth. So you look at what the Most High has said, in Proverbs 16 and 4, Proverbs 16 and 4, it says, The Most High have made all things for himself, yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. They say evil is multiplied on the earth when the Greeks came into power. So, and to tell you, in Job 9.24, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. He, who is the wicked, cover the faces of the judges thereof, if not when who is it? Whose faces they painted in their Bibles, in their TV shows. They all look who? Like who? Like Caucasian people, which is a lie. You see? They cover the faces of the judges thereof. If not when who is it? Most I said. If it ain't them, then who is it? So, this is what we're looking at. They say evil is multiplied in the earth. Continue to read in the Apocrypha. First Maccabees 1 and 10. So you got to understand, we got to go before Mashiach Hashem came on the earth. This is what happened. So you see the spirit of what was going on and how people were. Verse 10. 
of 1 Maccabees, the first chapter. And there came out of them a wicked root. Antiochus, surname Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been in hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. See? So he reigned in the hundred and thirty seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. They say, Hey, let's go, let's go hook up with the heathen. Since we left from being around them, we have much sorrow. And most I told us in Jeremiah 10 and 2 and many scriptures, learn not to wear the heathen. You know, in London, uh, Psalm 106 and 35 down, said that was a trap for us. And you'll see what happened. So they said what? In verse 11, in those days went there out of Israel, wicked men amongst us, we the Israelites, who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Remember, two-thirds of our people ain't good for nothing anyway. Then, now, and forever. It says, then certain other people were so forward therein, herein, that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. See, we didn't do that. They made themselves uncircumcised. So you wonder why Masha tried to deal with all the things he had to do when he came on the earth? Look, Israel made themselves uncircumcised. And forsook the holy covenant, the covenant he made with who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the twelve tribes of Israel. They forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. See? Let's jump over to uh, uh, first. This is a great chapter. You can read the whole chapter yourself. We're going to jump right over to. Uh, Verse 29. Because everybody was confused. We as the Israelites with evil being multiplied on the earth to a high extent. As it is today. But listen to what it says, verse 29. And after two years fully expired, the king, King Athios, sent his chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Judah, who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude and spake peaceful, peaceful words unto them, but all was deceit. See, they liars. That's the devil, deceitful and evil, person. All was deceit. And when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city, and smote it very sore, and destroyed much people of Israel. See? Came with peaceful words, but what was in his heart, in his mind. And when he had taken the spoils, robbed us of the city, he set it on fire and pulled down the houses and walls thereof on every side. But the women and children took their captives. See, like I say all the time, the women and children were just like spoils. They took them captive and possessed the cattle, took our cattle. Then built they the city of David with a great and strong wall and with mighty towers and made it strong, a stronghold for them. And they put therein a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. Look, they stored it also with armor and victuals. And when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, when they had robbed us, they laid them up there. And so they became a sore snare, sore trap amongst us, wicked men. For it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary and an, and an evil adversary to Israel, an evil enemy to Israel, it says. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it, insomuch that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them, had to run out of our city because of them. Whereupon the city was made in habitation of strangers, 
and became strange to those that were born in her. And her own children left her to the leave the land. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feasts were turned into mourning. Her Sabbaths into reproach, disgrace. Her honor into contempt, as had been her glory. So her dishonor increased, and her excellency was turned into mourning. Was being excellent in our homeland. It's turning in the morning. A lot of crying is admitting this. So moreover, King Antiochus, this Edomite, wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Sound familiar? New word order? We all one people? That all should be one people. Listen, and everyone should leave his laws so the heathen agreed according to the commandments. Or the king, but they don't have no law. What laws they have? We the ones that the most I gave the laws to. It's all geared around us. You see? Children of Israel. Because all the gods and the nations are idols. What laws they have? In idolatry. Verse 43. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. See, that's a religion. From the Latin word, religio, means to hold back, keep down the restraint. He said, everybody going to be one people. So how can we be one people when the Most High separated us from all people and gave us his law, such commandments? Only the children of Israel. But we are going to be one people. Verse 43, yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed it to idols and profaned the Sabbath. See? The king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in, in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. You know, that's why you look at it. This already happened. You see how people right now, they, they believe in all the different pagan days that Edomites myself set up to worship. They're their holidays, you know. Look at the vows, A, E, I, O, and U, and sometimes why? They just change our holy days and put an I there instead of the Y, like this. Like, sometimes why? They put holiday, that's their holy day that you celebrate when you celebrate Christmas and Easter and Halloween and Fourth of July and all these different Easter and all these different pagan days that they have set up as their holidays which is holy days, and I say, A-E-I-O-U, and sometimes why? And just change all Y to an I for themselves, if they change everything. Santa Claus, that's Satan's law. Just move the letters over a little bit, you get Satan's laws. A lot of things that you look at, it's put in your face, they laugh at you, they leave I'm talking about. But most people don't even think about these things. But they put it in your face, it's right there. You see, they defiled our temple. Verse 46, and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and groves, just do it what the Edomite kingdom did under King Antiochus Epiphanes. He set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrificed swine's flesh, pig's flesh. We're supposed to get touch of dead pig cops, he tells us in Leviticus 11 chapter. And unclean beasts, that was unclean, sacrificed on our altars to defile it that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. See? Homosexuality and eating pork and all the things that would be contrary to the laws of the Most High. Just being wicked. To the end, they might forget the law. That's why they do all these things. That's why we think, why you have these religions now? To the end, they might forget the law. What do the people say? We let the law with the mercy and grace. Jesus Christ died for my sins. He died for me. Do you speak in tongues? You speak in, you, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? You speak in tongues? That's all they know. Where do you find that at? They can't tell me. Break it down for me. They have no clue. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. And whosoever would do would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. Put him to death. You don't follow what I say. This is before Mashiach came under the Greek Empire. 
In the selfsame manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. We are in the oppressive state of the Edomites right here. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit every one that forsook the law, and so they committed evils in the land. So if you forsake the law, you're creating evils in whatever land you are, as a scattered of Israel. And drove the Israelites into secret places. These are the catacombs that we, we, we uh, ran into, even wheresoever they could flee for secure or security in the catacombs. See? And you keep reading, I mean, it was like. Now the 15th day of the month Kaslu, in the 140th and 5th year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and built idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side amongst we the children of Israel, not in the city of Judah, in our country. And burnt incense at the doors of their houses and in the streets. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law, they tore the books of the law, which they found, they burnt them with fire. They burnt them, they burnt them with fire. Ripped them up, tore them up, threw them in the pile and burned them up. The law of the Most High. Now you wonder, this is before my Shaq came on the earth, just why certain things he's saying, you gotta understand, this is why he said the things that he said and why we were acting the way we were acting against him and some for him. See? Verse 57. And whatsoever was found with any the book or the command or the testament, or if any consented to the law, these laws are most high. The king's commandment was that they should put him to death. You know? You follow the laws of the Most High, the king's commandment, this Edomite, Antiochus, Epiphanes, the king said, put him to death when you follow the laws of the Most High. So now they ain't got to put you to death. Our people are so backwards and so lost, destroyed for lack of knowledge, they don't follow the law of the Most High. They say we ain't under the law. I mean, it's programming their mind to what? To religion. See, you just remember that Latin word, legio, mean to hold back, keep down and restrain them. Held them back, kept them down and restrained them from what? The laws of the Most High, the truth. Which is the laws of the Most High when you read Psalms 119, 142. That righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and that law is the truth. See? Up to this day. And anybody with the, following the commandments of the Most High, the King's commandment, this Edomite king was to put him to death. Thus did they by their authority, verse 58, unto the Israelites every month to as many as were found in the cities. See? Now the five and twenty day of the month, they did sacrifice unto the idol altar, which was upon the altar of the Most High. At which time, according to the commandments, Mammoth, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised. Whether it's circumcised on the eighth day for a boy that's born or circumcised and bringing them to the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the Most High's laws. Every 25th day of the month, including your Christmas, they put women to death that taught the children this truth, or that circumcised their boys. Listen, verse 61, and they hang the infants about their necks. That's what you see these bulbs on these Christmas trees. That's what they did. That's what that represents when you put no bulbs on the Christmas tree. That was our little baby's heads that they put on the Christmas trees. And they, what, the 25th day of that month? Oh, yeah. 
Come on. To this day, December 25th, or excuse me, 12-25, so locked in. It says, and they hang the infants about their necks and fill their houses and slew them that have circumcised them. Albeit many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Wherefore they chose rather to die that they might not be defiled with meat and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So then they died, and there was very great wrath upon Israel. That's what my second shot came in the earth. Though. It's terrible. So now, look at uh, First Maccabees three and forty one. First Maccabees 3.41 And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves. See that? Came into the camp to buy us for slaves. So don't think that when the Mashiach Shai came on the earth, everything was peaches and cream. Nah, everything was okay. Nah, it wasn't. It was not, brothers and sisters. Look at uh, 2 Maccabees 6 and 6. It says, Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feast or, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Read it again. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feast or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. See? Can you Possess yourself to be an Israelite. Look at all. Uh, verse 8. Say, Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestions of the Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe just another one of the so-called generals that was ruling after Alexander the Greek died, the Ptolemy, against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. You know, profane our altars and so forth. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. But there were two women brought who had circumcised their children and when they had openly led around about the city the babes hanging at their breasts. They hung their babies on their breasts. They cast them down headlong from the wall. Threw them down. Threw them over the wall to their death. They were grab dragging around the city with their babies hanging off their breasts. And others, verse 11, and others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly. That's what I said. They had to run into catacombs. They found out they were in the catacombs, keeping the laws of the Most High, keeping the Sabbath days, the feast days, and so forth. And others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly. 
being discovered to fill up, were all burnt together. Get that? They burnt them up together because they made a conscious to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day, the Sabbath. They burned them up. Now I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for the chastening of our nation. These are the things that happened to us before Masha came on the earth. So, then you continue to read, especially, you read about Ele Eleazar, starting in uh, verse 18, how they tortured him for not eating abominations. When you read 2 Matthew 7 chapter, you got a mother and her seven sons that's being tortured by the Greeks, by the Edomites, by the so-called white man, the so-called Caucasian, indigenous, I might say. And they came into their power. Just what they did. So, yeah, they took it out. It's not, I mean, you look at 1 Maccabees 1 and 1, it said Alexander the Greek, so he's right there. It don't take a rocket science to figure that out. They teach you that in school. While well, Alexander the Greek taking down the Persian Greek Empire. There it is right there. But you don't see it from Malachi to Matthew. They took that out. So you wouldn't know. But all we know, all praise the Most High, that he gave us the ability to look into things in these last days. So now when you look at Masha Gavshai coming on the earth, this is in full force. Just you have the same people just call themselves what? The Romans. And you have Romulus and Remus, two brothers that were raised by a Sheba. That's why you go to Caesar, Caesar Power. Look it up, Romulus and Remus. They were raised by a wolf, a Sheba. In Caesar Palace, you see, only they got them black, but they really was Caucasian. With a black dog, a black wolf, whatever. With their mouths up to the uh, breast of the wolf. They were raised by a she -wolf. And Romulus said, we want to change the names of our people to the Romans. And Remus said, no, let's leave it like it is. And Romulus killed his brother, Remus, just like Cain killed Abel. Same spirit. And so the people were named Romans. And they took down, came to power after the Greeks were ruled. So let's look at uh, going to it because the Most High told us in them curses that we would be, all the stuff would befall us. But we want to try and go some other way. There ain't no other way, but the way the most I say it's going to be, it's going to be just the way he says it's going to be, and no other way it's going to be. Just a moment. 